Hello and welcome to your lecture on average velocity. Average velocity is something you should already have some understanding of. S suppose you were traveling uh, for 30 miles and it took you 20 minutes to get there. So you're driving pretty quickly. That means your average velocity over this time interval was three halves of a mile per minute. So one and a half miles per minute. All right, um, so that should be pretty clear. Now let's model it a bit more closely with math. Suppose that the function f of x equals x squared describes your path over time specifically the distance from a given point to somewhere else All right what is your average velocity over the period, say t equals 0 to t equals 10. Again, you're going to do the same thing, total distance over total time. Okay. What is the total distance? Well, in the beginning, you were at y value 0, so this is 0, and at the end you were at y value f of 10, and the total time traveled was 10 seconds. So what is f of 10? f of 10 is 100 over 10 seconds, 10. Now, I didn't give you the distance increments. So this could have been, let's say, feet, for example, in which case this would be feet. And I didn't give you the time increments. Let's just say, in this case, it's seconds. Then you would have 10 feet per second. Now let's make this example a little bit more interesting. Let's say your distance was given by the following. Equation. So what's the average velocity? I'm going to denote it this way from 0.2 to say 0.5. Again, you'd have the distance traveled in the numerator over the time elapsed in the denominator. So what is the distance traveled? It's f at the right endpoint minus f at the left endpoint over the distance traveled, or over the time elapsed. Okay. So you'd have to compute all of this, that is negative 16.5 squared plus 20.5 plus 10. That's on one end. All minus negative 16.2 squared plus 20 times 0.2. plus 10. That's all in the numerator. Um, let's just write out that's 0.3. Okay. Notice that the constant terms always just cancel. Okay, so 
what else uh, can we combine here to simplify the numerator? Well, we have the 16s and we have the 20s. So we have 16 times negative 0.25 and then positive 0 0.04 and then we have the 20s times 0.5 minus 0.2 and that's all over 0.3 16 times negative 0.21 plus 20 times 0.3 all over 0.3. The 0.3s cancel here. You get a negative 0.7. Finally, and I'm going to just reverse order, it's 20 minus, if you multiply 16 times negative 0.7, you get 11.2 equals 8.8 .8. okay and again I didn't give you the time interval or the distance uh, units of measurement so if this were feet say f of t is given in feet t in let's say minutes, this would be 8.8 .8 feet per minute. Okay, so that is a more complicated computation for average velocity, but remember it's just rise over run. Rise over run. Now let's look at another example using the same function. So remember, we're looking at this um, having units of feet per minute. And that's our function. And we're looking at a different time interval now. Let's look at the time interval between half a minute and a minute. We go through the same process. So now I want you to pause the video and finish this computation. If you did this computation right, you should get negative four. Again, that's feet per minute. So I want you to ask yourself, does this make sense? Negative four. So again, pause the video and try to answer that question. So what it means is that at some point in time, this uh, object, which is moving, was moving in the opposite direction towards where it came from. And you can understand that if you understand the graph of this function. So what are a few basic things you can understand about the graph of this function? Uh, just by looking at, for example, the sign. The sign is negative and it's a quadratic, so you know that it must be a parabola that faces down. Moreover, you know at t equals 0, it's at 10. Okay. You also know from your previous calculation that its movement was positive for at least some period of time. Why? Because the average velocity was positive. Okay. So you know it must have gone positive in the positive direction for some period of time. But like all parabolas do, it goes up and then it goes down, all downward facing parabolas. Okay. So later on in this calculus class we can 
use other techniques to find this point very easily. But given this calculation, we know that at some point after t equals 0.5, the movement of the object was in the opposite direction. All right, so that's what this tells you. It's a valid answer, and it tells you something, uh, something very important about the movement of that particle. So I'm going to finish this lecture with just uh, indicating another way that you can express this concept of average velocity. So instead of what we've been doing, which was total distance over total time equals f at the end point minus f at the beginning point over time which which we expressed as b minus a you could also write it as f of the beginning point minus a uh, plus the interval of time that has elapsed. So let's say the, the, the end point is B and the beginning point is A. Then what we'd have is F A plus delta T minus F of A over delta T. Okay. It's the same idea, just expressed in a different way. Again, here's BA, F of A, F of B. Instead of expressing this in terms of A and B, we instead just call BA plus some change in time, where this is your delta T. Okay, and we can do all these computations in this format as well. So we can write in the, in the following way. The average velocity between half a minute and a minute is f of 0.5 plus the difference between 1 and 0.5 is 0.5 minus f of 0.5 all over 0.5 and we'd go through exactly the same procedure so with our previous equation what was this this is negative 16 1 squared etc okay, this quantity minus negative 16.5 squared etc over 0.5 the actual computation is the same, but the notation is different. All right, so that's all I wanted to talk about in terms of average velocity for your lecture. See you next lecture.